all today. Welcome to worship. We're so glad to be together. I can see people in the parking lot. We're just going to gradually get inside today. So that is a, a gift to be together. Um, a few announcements I want to make. Number one, we'd love for you to sign in and let us know that you're here. There's a will be shortly a QR code on the screen to, to get you to our attendance. And so um, that lets us know you're with us. It also is a chance for you to share your prayers, your joys, and your concerns, and uh, and just a chance to connect. That's part of why we do church together, is to be able to pray for one another. And so, um, so you can go ahead and do that. And then uh, announcement-wise, there is a whole bunch in this week's newsletter, uh, partly to, to get ready because Advent starts in like a few weeks, which is amazing and unbelievable. I know, right? It's unbelievable at the same time. But we have Advent studies um, that are launching and, and chances to be at Sarco Para Glow at the park together and, um, and chances for a luminary night again to remember um, uh, those who who we have lost to COVID. And there's just, it's going to be a really meaningful and beautiful season. And so I encourage you to, to dive back in if you if you haven't, but, um, or or just dive in and let, let the Lord lead the way during Advent. There's a lot to get involved in there. Um, we also have two different uh, uh, drives happening. Our serve team is leading us. One is is um, this this giving back drive, uh, helping refugees and evacuees who are moving to Kansas City furnish their homes. And so one of our bins out there is um, is full. I can see uh, sheets out there and blankets and um, brooms and things. But the most needed items are on the the serve page of our website, and you can see that there's also a QR code on that poster there. If you want to just do that real quick and screenshot it and go to the store, um, you can do that. We also have a, a bin that's collecting Crosslines Christmas store items. This is something our church has done for a really long time, but Crosslines is, is an incredible nonprofit in our community that helps serve our, our neighbors who uh, need a little help uh, throughout the year. But this for the Christmas store particularly um, is a chance to, um, to make Christmas really special for some folks. And so we, we specifically collect... Um, uh, clothes for uh, a boy that's like size 16 and you can see the the items around that hoodies and athletic pants not just like sweats but like cool athletic pants and, and um, you can see some of those items that are already in there if you if you want to know but I know I had some fun at Target because I like to go to Target but it, it was like I'm shopping for someone else at Target and so filling the cart for me and that that was a good thing and so I think it's a gift to be able to be a part so I would encourage you to find a find some time and find a way to serve um, and, and to do that this week we also have faith voices for Medicaid expansion meeting Thursday evening on zoom um, with other people of faith across the state helping folks uh, get health care access um, in, uh, who are in a coverage gap. And so all of that's happening. You can check out our website, Ways to Love, Seek, and Serve. But it's a beautiful gift to be together, a beautiful gift um, to be in worship. I want you to know we have the most amazing baptism happening here in a little bit that I'm going to tell you more about. But it is it's probably going to make me cry. So it's so good and such a gift, and, um, and, and I'm just so glad that you all are here to worship together. So with that, I'm going to have the band take it away. Good morning, St. Paul's. Let's stand and sing. To heaven and here noise inside the sound of angels all the sound of angels songs and all this for a king we could join and sing all to Christ the King how constant how divine the song of ours will rise oh how constant how divine this love of ours will rise will rise oh praise him oh praise him he is all Raise 
Amen. Would you pray with me really quick? God, thank you so much for beautiful, crisp fall weather. Thank you for members new and old. And just thank you for the promises that you keep in our lives. God, as we sing about you and all that you are, help us to just want to praise you. Remind us who you are today. In your name we pray. Amen.
Amen, amen. You may be seated, and I would invite our kids to head to Kids Connection, so their leaders are in the back. Here at St. Paul's, we cheer them on when they head to Kids Connection, so we're going to cheer them on. We love our kids. Oh, we got to line, we got to line the stragglers. We got to keep it going. <laughs> Wonderful. It is a joy to see them, and I know that they love they love their time and their learning, and it's so beautiful. So we continue our Changing Leaves season. It's all uh, about change and, um, and the gift and the beauty that it can bring. And so last week we talked about how changing leaves us doubting, and we <laughs> heard a fascinating story about the Israelites and asking questions and in it, they found their healing. And this week, we're going to talk about wonder. Changing leaves us wondering and in awe. So our scripture today, I'm going to read from the message version, which I don't always do, but I, love, I really love the language this week. And so it's from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. Here are these words. One day, as he was teaching... Pharisees and religion teachers were sitting around. They had come from nearly every village in Galilee and Judea, even as far away as Jerusalem, to be there. The healing power of God was on him. And some men arrived carrying a man who was paralyzed on a stretcher. And they were looking for a way to get into the house and set him before Jesus. And when they couldn't find a way in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they removed some tiles and let him down in the middle of everyone, right in front of Jesus. Impressed by their bold belief, he said, friend, I forgive your sins. And that set the religion scholars and Pharisees buzzing. Who does he think he is? That's blasphemous talk. God and only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking and said, Why all this gossipy whispering? <laughs> Which is simpler, to say, I forgive your sins, or to say, get up and start walking? Well, just so it's clear that I'm the Son of Man and authorized to do either, or both, he now spoke directly to the, the paralyzed man and said, Get up, take your bedroll, and go home. And without a moment's hesitation, he did it. He got up, took his blanket, and left for home, giving glory to God all the way. And the people rubbed their eyes, stunned, and then also gave glory to God. Awestruck, they said, we have never seen anything like this. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. 
For God, you are our rock and our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Changing leaves. I got in my car to run an errand in Waldo this week. And I was so excited to get to see the fall colors on the drive. And I was in like comfy Friday Sabbath clothes. And it was all set to be this perfect fall morning. And and then I I walked outside to the car. And and I had to stop in my tracks to believe it. But it was snowing. (laughs) Right? Snowing. Right there on my fall morning. And I was so worried, you know, I'd miss another shot (laughs) at seeing all the leaves. But, you know, it's like, it is what it is. You got to move forward. And so I started driving, and it made me think about snow a lot and and how after a snow, we we have this white blanket. Not on Friday, right? But, like, when it snows, like, really snows. But we have this white blanket and this quiet sound, and we just look around and we see the sparkles and the silence and the the ready-made play place just waiting for, like, a layered kid, you know, uh, to to build a snowman. And it got me thinking about how different leaves falling feels from from a big snow, right? Leaves are spread out over a month, a long fall, a long painted landscape. Each brush stroke, you know, it, it looks different when the light hits it on different days and It's more like Christmas lights, right? Like we can drive around and smile at this house and that house and this tree and that bush. But here it was snowing. And I also have to admit to you something else that happened this week. And um, I get the notifications for when the Reverend Adam Hamilton goes live on Facebook. He is pastor at Church of the Resurrection, in case you don't know, you know, down the down the street. But um, and I don't know how Facebook algorithms work, but my Apple Watch it lit up with his face on it earlier this week, and I'm like, hello, my friend Adam, right? Um, but he was doing his devotion, and guess what? It was on. Some of you might might listen to it. It was on changing leaves, okay? And so it's hilarious to me. He was teaching them all about what we talked about last week, about why leaves change colors and how they store up for the harshest conditions in winter. And I'm cracking up because, you know, apparently all the United Methodist Church pastors in Kansas City decided this was a good thing to talk about. But his devotion on Tuesday also said that that was peak leaf time and that the rain that happened at the end of last week, um, it, it was going to mean that we weren't going to see these beautiful fall colors anymore. And I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> I was pretty grateful that after the rain, at least, it was still looking good on my drives until I walked out and I saw that snow on Sunday or on Friday. And, and I was like, well, you know, I guess Adam's right. And I'm going to have to grieve the end of fall and hope for the best with this sermon series that still has two Sundays left. All right. <laughs> right. But let me tell you about what I saw on my drive to Waldo on Friday. In the light flurry of snow, I made a wrong turn, which isn't exactly rare, but but I ended up on this residential street. And it was the kind of street that just sort of like hugs, hugs the ground and formed a complete archway over the road, like I was going through a tunnel. And those leaves were magnificent. There were golden trees, and, and several of um, those trees where it's like they're somehow lime green and yellow and bright red and burgundy all in one tree, you know. Um, there's, you know, bright orange here, and it's like rich brownish maroon there. So I decided to keep taking wrong turns so I could see more leaves. And it was truly like looking at Christmas lights because you go down a street and you're like, there's something shiny this way, you know. And I was going like five miles an hour, and no one was rushing me from behind. But I will say my phone and my car and my watch were all in sync telling me I was not going where I was supposed to. But, but I didn't care. Changing leaves were still happening. And, and I loved every minute of that earth-toned goodness. And I think my favorite sight, my favorite sight in that drive had less to do with what I saw above me when I looked up, and more to do with the ground being covered from this one tree that had dropped all its leaves, 
so just recently, but but it was it, it was so recent that it was just this beautiful red around the tree, and it looked looked kind of like this fall themed Christmas tree skirt, like right around it. Blankets of leaves on the ground everywhere the more I looked, and I don't know if I was just in this reflective sort of state or what, but it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful, and I was in awe of it all. I heard someone <laughs> once call those fallen leaves leaf litter, leaf litter, and I had always sort of dismissed the term because it isn't litter, it's lovely, <laughs> you know, but I looked it up this week to see if I was you know, <clears throat> if it was something that that person said to be poetic, or if it was actually a thing, and, and it turns out it's actually a thing, <laughs> and it's a sciencey thing, which is probably why I figured the alliteration made it poetry, and I had no, no idea anything about it. But leaf litter, leaf litter is this beautiful um, part of creation to help make healthy soil, especially when that leaf litter gets to the point of decomposition. And it, th it then releases nutrients into the soil and it helps to keep the ground moist. And leaf litter also serves as great nesting material and hiding places and protected spots for animals, which makes me really creeped out. <laughs> like I'm never gonna clean that back corner of my fence now. I guess it's a good thing, you know, it's there. Leaf litter becomes this dead organic material that provides the perfect habitat for things like worms and snails and spiders and those and microscopic decomposers like fungi and bacteria and so because of all of that um, and all that can happen with it leaf litter is considered to be very biodiverse and biodiversity is this concept that refers to the variety of life forms from the genetic level to the species level. So in leaf litter, we have you know, some critters who feed on the litter itself and break it up into smaller pieces and some crit critters who eat those critters. And some organisms like the bacteria decompose it to convert it into the beneficial chemicals and minerals that can be absorbed by plants. So not only is fall this beautiful time of year with the changing leaves dropping, it's also this time that, that welcomes this great biodiversity. And biodiversity is great for all kinds of life. And it's this natural reminder that when we are in this together, we are better for it. When one person is thriving, it's good for them, but it's also good for all of us. And that's part of why I think this story from scripture today leaves everyone so awestruck. Because it's a story of people helping their friend find healing. But also somehow in their helping and observing, they also had their eyes open to the healing that can happen for them all. You see, we have Jesus. He's rising in authority and power. The power of God was upon him. The healing power of God was upon him. And even the leaders came to listen and observe what he was teaching. And this, uh, uh, you know, this man, Jesus, he'd been healing. They'd been hearing about him. And they were inside of this house. And the place was not accessible for everyone to get in. I think that's too often true of the places where we teach scripture and talk about healing. And it's one of the things I think St. Paul should be so very proud of, that accessibility is something that matters to us. We hear gratitude from people a lot about the fact that they can get into our building. It's part of how we celebrate the worth, dignity, and gift of every person as a child of God here. But, but, but anyway, back to our story. There was a man who, who was paralyzed and he couldn't get in to hear this healing teaching of Jesus happening. And so instead of going in and leaving him behind so they could hear, his friends chose to do something else. His friends go to the roof and lower him into the house to be healed right in front of Jesus. I love this, right? This is one of the most beautiful stories in the whole entire Bible, I think. It is just so beautiful. And, and it's, it's the kind of story that inspires groups like Faith Voices for Medicaid expansion, right? Because the witness of, of how this man's healing mattered so much to the others who brought him there and lowered him through the roof, giving up their ability to walk right in on their own. This is like biodiversity in the Bible, right? 
not not the sciencey part, but the part where we understand that together we are all better able to thrive and be healed and have a whole life. We are able to live and thrive because we have each other. And what is so <clears throat> striking to me about this amazing story where Jesus comes to this man who is paralyzed and invites him to walk again, the people who were gathered around and, and listening to Jesus had already been a, a bit skeptical that, that even a good thing was happening in the first place. But I love how this translation says it, that the people rubbed their eyes, stunned. And then they, just like the heal, healed man, gave glory to God too. Awestruck, it says, we've never seen anything like that. We've never seen anything like that. Awestruck. Now, I want to hold, hold this feeling in our hearts a bit. Never seen anything like that. Awestruck. Everyone just watched this man who had come into the house by being lowered through the, the roof be able to walk out on his own two feet because people came together to help him find Jesus, the healer. Awestruck. Rubbing their eyes. We've never seen anything like that. This is the kind of change, this is the kind of change that I think gives us a glimpse into something pretty beautiful, pretty beautiful that happens each and every day for all of us. And it's the fact that we need to know, I think we're really ready and eager to experience wonder. We long for it. We are so poised to rub our eyes but only in disbelief, right? The people were all grumbling. They had no idea through this moment that Jesus would heal. And maybe that disbelief comes in a healthy skepticism, like we talked about last week. It's like, it's okay to ask questions. But I think it might also come because we don't practice naming our awe very much, even though I think we want to. We don't wonder. We want definitive answers. And I'll be honest that I don't know if that is self-protective because of the known and yet ambiguous loss, I heard it described this week, that we're experiencing right now through the trauma of COVID, or if that skepticism was present in us even before. But I think it's good to remember that changing leaves us wondering seeing things we've never seen before. And I think what we're doing more and more of is what the people in the story did. Grumble about change and get disheartened more than we take heart. Jesus said, why all the gossipy whispering? Why all the gossipy whispering? And made it clear that change was also going to look like healing that came to be because of that community of believers meeting Jesus. And the people rubbed their eyes and they were stunned and then they gave glory to God. Awestruck, they said, we've never seen anything like this. Now, I was thinking about the leaf litter in my own neighborhood. I don't think you can see a single blade of grass beneath the yellow leaves covering my front yard right now. My neighbor Karen's is the same, but her yard is orange. And I was walking the dog and stopped and talked to Karen, and we were talking about how beautiful, how beautiful the trees on our block were. And we were looking up and admiring them. And then something twitched in us, and we started complaining. And we got on a kick about the leaves in our yards. And, and you need to know that my house and Karen's house, neither one of us have a tree in our front yards. <laughs> The leaf litter that lived at our house, it didn't come from our trees. And we, and by, by we, I really mean Karen with me listening, started talking about how those aren't her leaves to clean up. And to be fair, you know, Karen is a senior adult widow and has no business getting out in her yard and clearing them, so that's all understandable. But she was really wanting to, you know, drama ally together about the other neighbor's leaves falling down. 
And never in a million years, you know, would Karen and I have gotten to a place that day where we could look down at that leaf litter on the ground and think, oh my goodness, look at that biodiversity. <laughs> look at this possibility right in front of us. That was not a possibility. Mm -mm. But you know what? I think that I want to be the person that sees awe and loss and life in the leaf litter and not the one who eggs on the drama and resentment in the change. I know that there are a lot of messes in our lives that we didn't make. And it is so hard. It is so hard to want to just sit and be frustrated and in pain and grieve. We want to look at the leaf litter and just complain. But you know what? I read a story like this one in Luke today, and I don't want to be one of the gossipy whisperers. I want to be the one who lowers my friends so they have accessibility toward healing. I want to be the one who is healed. I want to be the one who sees the awe and the loss and the life and witnesses the healing all around me and gives glory to God with my jaw dropped open in awe. That's who we're invited to be as Christians. We need to be in the business of helping our friends see the awe and healing and not just be mad together in the unprecedented times we see and the pain around us. But I do want to say that does not mean that we need to push aside our grief because grief is healing. Grief is healing. In leaf litter, the decomposition is what leads to nutrients that bring life again. Let yourself see the loss in what is changing. It is so, so painful. All that we have lost. The ritual and the rhythm of time. There's so much time gone of healing. And it used to be beautiful, right? Our lives and our leaves. And now they are hard and crunchy and full of bugs and snails and creepy crawly things we don't want in there. But my goodness, there are things out there that God is doing that we need eyes to see. In leaf litter, there is biodiversity at work helping life become abundant. In the story of Luke's gospel, community is at work helping life become abundant. What about us? What about us? Because I think that there are probably things that, that we need to share, to share with one another that have left us in awe. Because we need the wonder and excitement that bursts like a child jumping into a freshly raked pile of leaves, right? We need joy and goodness. We need the togetherness that mirrors biodiversity, working together through awe and loss and life to find healing, to find healing in all that is going on. The people in Luke's gospel wit witness healing, and they say, we've never seen anything like that. And you know, church, I wonder if that's true. Because Jesus had been healing and teaching for a while. And people had been caring about the most, caring about the most vulnerable for a long time before Jesus. But maybe that day, they just had eyes to see what was happening before them. And maybe that's us today, too, ready to see the leaf litter as life healing and life sustaining. On my drive here just this morning, down Shawnee Mission Parkway, I saw one of those signs they put up when work is happening, and it said, Litter crew ahead. Litter crew ahead. 
I couldn't help but laugh. Because, y'all, that is who I think God wants us to be. The litter crew. The ones who have eyes to see the life around us. Who have hearts to help each other find healing, even when it is hard. Maybe especially when it's hard. That's what we do, church. The litter crew of the body of Christ who says, we have never seen this before. With awe, even though we know, we know that God's abundance is all around us. So I think let yourself. Let yourself take that invitation to see the life in the changing leaves. Let yourself feel awe. Changing leaves us wondering. Changing leaves us wowed. And it's all there, ready to be seen. So have a conversation and listen. And may God show you a path toward healing in life today and always. May it be so. In the name of the creator and the redeemer and the sustainer of us all. Amen. So every week after the sermon, uh, we have a chance to come and light candles in prayer. Candles is a response to the word. Um, maybe it's something that God is doing in our hearts right now. The, the candle maybe of li- leaf litter that you need to, to shine some light on. Um, we have candles in the front and the back, but we invite you to come and get in line. And we have a, a, um, a candle that we pass and, and we share the light of Christ. And, um, and pray together and, and to do that. And so that's part of how we respond to God's word. The other thing we do is we give generously. It's part of what we do as a church to love, seek, and serve, and especially serve, I think, um, to, to be a, a people who invest in, um, in the mission of St. Paul's and uh, in, in the mission that God calls us to. I think every time we give generously, we are part of um, something that wows me. We, uh, we've been working on what it looks like to, to, to estimate our giving for the year to come. And in that, I just wrote thank you notes, a stack is big of, of all of you who have done that. Um, that is a place where every time I write that thank you and sign my name, I am in awe of you and what we are doing in a time that is unprecedented and it feels a lot like litter litter sometimes but we are doing it and God is doing it with us and and rising again so I just want to invite you if you haven't done that and you're part of our community and you want to to promise together we we have these cards they're at the offering plates but it's a chance for you to promise for our year to come and invest in that um, and if, if that, you're not ready to do that today, we're always ready to give generously. And there's offering plates next to the candles in the front and the back. And so let us go to God in prayer. Let us go to God in generosity. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind. To me, and all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't hurt it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. When I 
Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't. Coming after me. So shut up. There's no shadow you won't light up. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. 
to tell you all about how this baptism came to be. And some of you have heard the story about how the Duke family connected with St. Paul's, but um, I got an email from Meg who saw our booth at the farmer's market and said, we moved here in pandemic and our church, our United Methodist Church in Houston, we've still connected with them but we had a baby and we want her to be baptized. And so I don't know if we can make it work, but, but what can we do? And so I looked up their church and found Pastor Jarbo, who they talked about and um, sent him an email and said, hey, we have this situation. They live here now. They worship with you online and have been part of that but they've met us and, and we want to figure out what that looks like to, to do church together in pandemic. And so I emailed him, um, Pastor Jarbo in Houston, Texas. And um, the next day we, uh, his name's Michael, and I um, were on a Zoom call of young clergy across the country and we had no idea that that was gonna happen. And then they sent us out into breakout rooms. It was a group of young clergy who want to work toward an inclusive United Methodist Church in the future, uh, a chance to say, what is our church gonna look like and dream about it? And so they sent us out into random breakout rooms. And Michael, Pastor Jarbo and I both got sent to the room that focused on the United Methodist Connection and what we do um, to be church together across our denomination, whether you're in Kansas City or Houston. And I messaged him, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I sent you an email yesterday. And he's like, Laura, this is amazing. And so then a couple weeks ago, we had a conference in Kansas City and uh, of those young clergy coming together. And I got to meet him, and he is amazing. And we hung out after <laughs> afterward because it was so fun and so beautiful. And everybody, we, we ran into and we were talking we were like we have to tell you about what God is up to and this baptism that is about to happen and so we get to baptize Miss McKinney today and big brother Trace gets to be a part of it too and Austin and Meg we're so grateful and so we're going to be doing that here but Pastor Jarbo is also part of this service and you're, you're going to get to meet him on, on the screen in a second and so when you make the promises, we've worked as a congregation, what it means to make the promises in our baptism. Know that you're doing that today as St. Paul's United Methodist Church, but you're also representing a church in Houston, Texas, that is feeding this family and worshiping and making those promises too. And so this is what, this is what leaf litter does, right? And this is the life that rises out of something that is so broken and so difficult. And so, 
With all of that being said, siblings in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Pastor Michael Jarbo. Blessings to you all from the Journey Worship Community at Memorial Drive United Methodist Church here in Houston, Texas. Hello, St. Paul's community. Hello, Pastor Laura, and hello especially to my friends Meg and Austin Duke and little Trace. Uh, how exciting today is, and I'm so looking forward to playing just a small role in McKinney's baptism today. I hope you all are doing well in Kansas. We wish you well. There is a Duke-sized hole uh, here at The Journey as we miss you guys dearly. But we're going to be saying a blessing over this baptismal water, a beautiful sign of the connection of us as United Methodist brothers and sisters. And so, friends, would you posture yourself in a place of prayer? Let's pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the waters of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. And so, God, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and McKinney, who receives it, to wash away her sin, to clothe her in righteousness all the days of her life, that being raised in Christ, she might share in that final victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Nice job, Trace. So, Megan Austin, you make these promises today for McKinney that she one day can make them for herself. So on behalf of the whole church, wherever we are, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say we will. And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. Congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include McKinney now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. You're beautiful. McKinney Renee, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you put your hands on her? And we're going to pray for her. McKinney, Holy Spirit, work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, it is our joy to welcome our new sister 
in Christ. You will respond. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend McKinney to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in these congregations of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us welcome Ms. McKinney Renee into the body of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our God and our King, to Him we will see. In His great mercy, He has given us life. So we can be called the children of God. Great is the love that the Father has given us. He has delivered us. He has delivered us. Children of God, sing your song and rejoice for the love that
are the children we've been redeemed. We've been forgiven. We are the sons and the daughters of our God. We are the saints. We are the children. We've been redeemed. We've been forgiven. We are the sons and the daughters of our God. We are the saints. We are the children. We've been redeemed. We've been forgiven. We are the sons and the daughters of our God. Amen. As we go from this place, may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit go with us now and always that we might be the littered crew. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.